Watch this. I, okay. Listen to this podcast. I will uh, next week. Try that, David. We'll see. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much everything I got, David. What you doing? Um, you had you said you had a game. Did you want to talk about that later? I talked about Empire War. Already, oh, that's David. what it was. Sorry. Pay attention. Sorry. <laughs> um, I've got a couple things for this week. I've got a couple tech reviews. Um, okay. First one is uh, this week I bought. So we've we've done some stuff with VR with Jordan on the podcast before. He has the. Is it the HTC? No, no. What is it it's called? The Gear VR. The Gear VR. Samsung. Well, I went more <sighs> low key, dollar store style, and I got the Google Cardboard. Um, it's kind of where it all started with these mobile phones. Is this where it really started? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I got this Google Cardboard. I, it's it was ten bucks on Amazon, so I was like, yeah, I might as well try it. Um, it's just a big cardboard box that has a couple lenses in it, and then you put together this like crappy little strap, and then you put this thing for Velcro on your nose. But you put your phone in here, so it's pretty cool. It's you know, I'm gonna make the Velcro sound for the audio. Oh, that sounds good, dude. And you put your phone in here um, if you're listening to the, or if you're watching the video. Um, and then you you can put like my iPhone 6 Plus. You can put it in here, close it. It works with, I think, almost any iPhone at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can do like VR stuff. Now, obviously, the, the actual focus of it is a little blurry, but you get the feeling of VR. And Google has... Um, an app. cardboard app and stuff. Yeah, they have a cardboard app. And then there's companies that uh, have, have like stories in VR, which are like narrated by like a bunch of different famous people. One of them, I think, was, um, oh God, I can't remember his name. It was like Aaron Eckhart or something like that. So, you know, like a B actor or something. We're not, we're not talking like Leo. Um, but it's cool. <laughs> you can watch these movies, these little shorts in VR. And it's just really impressive. Like it's a cool like to see. You can show people pretty instantaneously. And they're like, like VR makes sense. We should move on to VR. Because like everybody I've shown it to, they're like, well, Holy VR to me is one of those things where you talk t- tell people about it and they're right. like, "Oh, that sounds kind of weird. I don't know." But as soon as you put a headset on their face, right. they're like, "Holy crap, this is amazing!" So here you go, here you go, Master Chief. Watch Cortana in VR. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, so far I really do dig it. For ten bucks, this is cool enough. I think obviously it's more of just a, it's like a, uh, like a tech demo more than anything. Oh yeah. Just because it's not very, like I said, I tried to watch some like YouTube videos in VR, and it's cool because I was like lying in bed, like you know, like your TV is up on the wall, so you can't like you have to turn your head. This I can like lay flat and actually put it on my face. The problem is that it's cardboard, so it, like cuts into your face. So it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's not for like <laughs> long engagements with it, dude. But if you wear like noise cancellation headphones, put this on. You feel like you're there. Mm-hmm. Like I rode a roller coaster. It was lots of fun. I put my hands up. Ah, was, my wife's like, what is going on over there? in bed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, you got to check this out. I was a little worried when I put it together because there wasn't like really great instructions with it, but I just went online and found it. But this company's called Top Max Maxions. Yeah, there's a bunch on Amazon. Just search for Google yeah. Cardboard. But yeah, so far I'm pretty impressed with it. I just, I'm waiting because I, I got a new graphics card a little while ago. Um, was it the 980? Mm-hmm. And I want to get the, like either the Vive or um, the... Oculus. Uh, Oculus, but I want to wait next generation because yeah, keep, definitely wait for second generation. I want. I Always. keep seeing all these games that come out on like Steam, and it's just like, oh my god! Some like, of the cool new Oculus stuff they showed yeah. at their last conference was pretty cool with the touch controllers. But yeah, definitely wait for second gen. It's only going to be cheaper and better. You might as well. Just when do you wait. think it's gonna? Because the Sony, well, the Sony VR, uh, the it, PSVR is kind of its own thing. Yeah, but it it it's I still available. I thought it was going to be like you can't get it, but you can go on Amazon right now and buy it, which yeah. is kind of well, it just came out like last week. Yeah. That's my point. It shouldn't be available if it was. You know what I mean? It's popular, but it's not like oh, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. the it's Nintendo not like a Wii new console. That's my point. I thought it was going to be. No, no, no. Um, no but uh, I, I just yeah. Eventually, when you know developers get the ability to expand the stuff, it's just going to be nuts. I just hope it's something that eventually everyone can afford, and there'll be like a set co- like an Oculus. Everyone can have it, and then more developers run to it. Because right uh, now, it's HTC, kind of a, if you're listening, send us a Vive. We will review it. Absolutely. If anyone else wants to send us a Vive too. <laughs> We'll plug whatever. Because what are those now? Those are still eight hundred a pop. Eight hundred. Yeah, it's funny. I'll go on like um, Steam and I play a bunch of you know. We played. Uh, we did a review of Tabletop Simulator, which is just like a like a basic board game maker app. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I go in there and there's people playing with the Vive, and I'm always like, "You have this eight hundred dollar thing. You're like, I'm gonna play cards with it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's the immersion, David. <laughs> I'm I'm there. It's just like I don't know. I would spend it on other cool things. Um. So that's one tech review I have. I think it was pretty cool for ten bucks. You should just at least yeah, pick yeah. one up if you have a smartphone. You just didn't. I didn't even know my phone could do it, right? Like I wasn't aware of that it had the capability. I thought it had to be like, you know, a new special. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So check that out. Um, The other thing that I uh, had for a couple weeks, and I wanted to fool around with them and um, see what I thought were 
Sorry, the Bose uh, SoundSport wireless headphones. Of course, I'm a big Bose fan. Um, plug, 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 plug. Eventually, we'll get our Bose uh, Blue Apron and Bose and HTC. Eventually, we'll get all of them. But uh, these are wireless um, in-ear headphones, which are kind of unique for Bose. When I worked there, wireless was like, "We'll never do wireless because you can't get the same audio quality." And they're still right, but um, that's true. Because um, uh, I had a chance to check these out. So these are the sport version. So they have like they're water resistant, sweat resistant. They have um, these stay here tips. I don't know if you can see it on the. Why'd you get the sport version, David? Um, just because I wanted it in case I use them to work out. Because I had a, I have yeah. a pair of in ear uh, or we'll wired. See if, we'll see if that happens. We'll see. Um, <laughs> uh, wired in ear headphones, and they also just kind of fell apart. The sport ones are a little bit more sturdier. Right. Um, they're starting to fray. The other ones that I've had, but I've had them for a number of years. But anyways, um, they've got the stay here tip, which kind of like grabs the inner part of your ear. In Is addition, patent patented. Stay. Yeah, patent pending or no, no, Trademark. they are. They're called stay here tips. Trust me, I know all about this. Uh, but the audio is is good um, for wireless for sure. They're not as good as the wired headphones. I can definitely tell that. Uh, but they still sound great. They're 150 bucks which isn't like a tremendous oh, amount of bad. money. They're not super expensive. Um, they come in, a, of course, like a bajillion different colors. Of course, I just went with the black. Um, but they have the little toggle switch, so you can do iPhone, you can do the Siri stuff, you can turn it up and down, skip track, stuff like that. Um, battery lasts about six hours. Um, oh, not, bad. not bad. Takes about two hours to fully charge. It's just weird because whenever you turn it on, it like there's this voice that's like, connecting to iPhone battery 60%. It's just like... It feels very Android-ish. It's like, stop talking. You're in my head. Like, stop talking to me. Scar Johansson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, the there is a slight delay. Now, this is most people probably wouldn't notice this, but obviously it, it connects through Bluetooth. And like if I'm watching a YouTube video with it or something like that, I can tell it's like a half a second delay. And it just, I can't, it bothers me. Like, I can't. Oh, that's still Because the video to the audio, it's just, it's very, very minuscule. But um, they're very comfortable. I love the the stay here tips. That's the the ones that I have with my wired headphones. Um, but for 150 bucks, you can't beat it. it. It's got good battery life. It's the micro USB charger. Um, overall, I really like it. Them, huh? uh, right here on the right ear, this little piece pops up, uh, and then there's a little plug-in charge right there. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting to see. You know, Bose has changed a lot since I worked there. They, Doctor Bose, uh, passed away, and then they they're a privately owned company still, which is insane. Um, but that was always a cool thing about Bose. I'm going to give you some background about Bose here. Right, here we go. Um, History gonna, lesson. Yeah. So uh, Bose, privately owned company, which is kind of cool as a tech company because most tech companies have a board of directors and they have to answer to them. They've got to come out with new, yeah, new things to come out all the time. Well, Bose can spend years and years and years mar- research and develop. I love to hear your straw. Sorry, over I'm that. trying to back away from the mic. <laughs> There you go. Got to, we're going to get our sound effect uh, CD going here. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they could spend a lot of time researching and developing so they could have these headphones that were in R&D for 13 years, which no other tech company could ever have because they'd be like, uh, so when are those coming out? Right, right. Um, so they've changed a lot of that. They used to just, you know, they would spend more time, but they feel more like a traditional company now with like all the different colors that they come out with and they're constantly coming out with new iterations of the same thing and every year yeah and like stuff that they're like we would never sacrifice quality to just do this because everybody else is doing it but then eventually i think the new people who are part of that culture have big sponsorships you didn't really see a lot yeah they used to never advertise like it was the herbie hancock like infomercials about selling the acoustic wave and you'd be like hey y'all you want to listen to it was like but now it's on NFL everywhere. Yeah. Um, so it's a big shift in there, but the, it's still, they still are great products. I think generally it's just the way that they make them year after year after year. It seems a little bit different, but check those out. I think they're worth the 150 bucks for sure. Um, the, the Bose wireless sport sound sports. See, now we're not going to get the promotion. I screwed it ah, up. David, you messed oh. up the read. <laughs> uh, the last thing I did this week, of course, I'm always playing new board games. Uh, new sure. board game I got this week for you guys is a game called, Bora Bora. Let's move this. Bora here. Bora. Bora Bora. Um, now, this is from designer Steffenfeld, if you didn't know. Oh, uh, Steffenfeld. Uh, but no, very, very cool game. This is a uh, Euro game through and through, which although I know you traditionally... Yawn. No, no, no. This one is like, <laughs> it has a lot of unique mechanics. It uses dice to uh, pick like different actions. But what's cool about the dice is that the higher the number, the better, the more strong the action you can do. Okay. Um, but normally in, in like these worker placement games, if I oh. go one place, if I go one place, you can't go there. Like it's limited. It's one person per spot. But the way the dice thing works is like, oh, if I have a six, it'll do like a super cool action at that space. But everybody else can place a dice there in that same spot as long as the die number is lower. 
So if it's a six, everybody can still go there if they have a five, four, three, two, one. Gotcha. But if you put a one, you've effectively blocked everybody else, but now you've got a weaker version of that action. Yeah, so you're like shooting for the high roll, but you don't want as high. To, yeah, yeah. yeah so that, cool. that mechanic in and of itself is kind of the the the, the engine of this game. Um, but what I like about this game and a lot of Steffenfeld games is that he kind of does like a lot of things in it. He does small versions of other types of games in his one big game meaning like there's an area control thing so in this game you're going to be building huts on on the island of Bora Bora you're going to be hiring workers you're going to be getting uh, tattoos you're going to be collecting seashells and all of those things are kind of separate little mechanics within the game so like when you're building huts it's an area control game so you're trying to uh, build your huts on these certain islands and control a certain amount of the island and at the end of the game whoever has more huts on an island or has more huts generally on the board gets extra points um, but you're also trying to collect resources like sand and uh, wood and stone to try to build out your um, make your huts even better um, then you're also trying to get tattoos because that determines turn order which really matters in this game because of that dice placement mechanic so it's it's like it feels like a really good puzzle I know you don't like cart like uh, jigsaw puzzles, but this one is um, it's not a lot of player interaction other than what I was telling you about the dice thing. Like if I place a one, I've effectively screwed you over. Right. And because you're playing, you know, with other players, you can see. Oh, G- I know Gerald wants to do this, so I'm gonna put my dice there so he can't do that for the whole turn. Um, but it's really fun. It's super beautiful like the game has this gorgeous oh, artwork. artwork looks pretty cool yeah it's got this you know of course you know polynesian um uh island artwork which is like gorgeous but it it does it is heavier than most euro style games um because of and it's not complex each thing in and of itself is simple like i was telling you oh i'm gonna build a hut put a hut here but you're trying to con- you're trying to make sure that you don't miss out on any one thing um, cause you gotta make sure I've, I've gotta make sure I have building huts so I can block Gerald and I've gotta make sure that, um, I'm getting tattoos so that my people are getting tattoos so that they can, I can be higher up on the turn order track. So a lot of cool stuff going on, um, in the game. It's, uh, Stefan Feld makes a bunch of great games. This is by far one of his best. Um, so I definitely recommend people check it out. If you like Euro games, if you like games that are puzzly, but aren't, um, aren't like, you know, stab the other person in the back or, you know, punch each other in the face. What's the fun in that? I know. There is a little bit of that. I don't. I, I don't know why you don't like any of these games. I know you like player interaction. This has a little bit, but not a lot. But I still think the puzzle part is fun of it. It's like trying to wrap your brain around, you know, making sure that you do everything effectively. Like, um, what was that steampunk one? A uh, steam time. Yeah, it's just these kind of games where there's so many different tracks and paths and stuff i just i end up taking my turn like staring at the board trying to think of the best way and people are like well hurry up you no know, just, th- th- these games are too much thinking David. yeah that's I'm true i'm an idiot come on <laughs> that's not true but um yeah they are prone to ap or as we call it in the analysis paralysis oh, geez. um but i think once you play these games it's just like any game you keep playing it over and over you, you kind of pick up on different things and there's so much variation in this game like there's a bajillion oh, sure. yeah, yeah. a bajillion Most tiles games, and stuff like that so the replayability is really really good um components are great it's just a lot of fun. I definitely recommend it. It's one of my favorite Euro games. So cool. Check that out. That's Bora Bora. Bora Bora. Bora Bora. Um, what else we got? We got anything else or you want to move on to the movie? Um, well, David, it's Halloween. Oh, that's true. This will come out on Halloween. So if you want to see our costumes last week, 